Hi, my name is James Peters. Um, this video is being recorded to show uh, the person who has purchased one of our uh, Skyflight Robotics Phantom 4 MicaSense Red Edge integration kits. Um, this video is to kind of help help the end user install this uh, kit onto their airframe. I'm going to start out basically by showing in the video some of the components that are in the kit and uh, then we'll get into the mechanical installation and the final video will be uh, the electrical connections and the setup and operation which will be in a separate video from this video. This video is strictly for the mechanical installation onto the camera and then to the airframe. So you'll notice with your when you get your kit from Skyflight Robotics it's going to come with several items here and uh, the first item we'll look at and get it out of the way is the, the battery charger. It's a very simple block type charger designed for 110 operation. It can also be used in 240 for European countries with an adapter. It can be purchased separately. Both of these batteries, they're a uh, 18650B uh, form factor cell, single cell lithium ion, uh, 3.7 volt nominal voltage, 4200 milliamp. The key thing with these cells are they come with a button circuit on top. It's, you, you can see the little line there that indicates that it has a BEC, a battery circuit, um, that basically controls the voltage for the minimum voltage cutoff. So you, if you run these, if you forget to turn it off, it won't damage the cell. Um, and when you're charging it, if the charger uh, you know, is malfunctioning, um, or power supply that you hook it to. If you were to use a separate type of power supply charger, the circuit card in the cell will turn off at the maximum voltage of 4.2 uh, volts. So that's a, that's a nice feature. You, the cell should last a long time. You should easily get six hours plus of operation with the camera running at full recording values. The next package, just a small package here, has got a couple of complimentary Skyflight Robotic decals. Feel free to use those however you wish. Um, the two cables in here, one is for your GPS module and the other one is for your compass and downwash light sensor module, downwelling light sensor that comes with your MicaSense camera. For the purpose of this video we're going to leave that portion out till the second video of the electrical installation. Um, this smaller cable is the power cable, power trigger cable basically the power cable but it does have the trigger pin active if you want to use it in a in a triggering scenario we like to use the MicaSense camera set into overlap mode so all you have to supply to it is power and it, and it triggers at the preset altitude you put into the camera and also the overlap settings within the camera is very simplistic simple to use and foolproof in that method so these these are the cables that come with it um, the cable that goes from the downwelling light sensor to the camera, we're not providing it at this time. It does come with the camera when you purchase a Red Edge. Um, later on, later versions, we're working on uh, a ribbon cable. It'll come with it with its own connector so you can take the, the, the camera off without having to manipulate the pin uh, HX, HXT connector for the the final connection that'll come in, in later versions we'll also offer that on our website at, at a very deep discount to our customers who already purchased this system um, the next piece of the kit is this is what we call the isolator dovetail mount it has four of the screws already on here they're already set to the maximum length of eight millimeter um, some customers complain about this um, when they put this on they start running the screws out and and then trying to put it on that doesn't work you got to have them in flush before you start that's key make sure the screws are flush before you start and I'll we'll show you this in just a second um, the other thing is don't over tighten them because you'll spin the rib nuts that are in the back plate of the camera uh, these are a, a rubber isolator so it soaks up some vibration we also put some tie wraps and one in each corner in case you have a hard landing it won't pull the rubber isolators out and then slam your camera on the ground um, the dovetail mount and then also the cradle that goes between the landing gear skids which will show that it slides together like this you'll see there's an arrow shows it says in 
pointing forward. This goes on the airframe forward. You'll see the little release me uh, mechanism here. You'll line that up, slide that in until you hear a positive click, and you'll note in this hole there'll be a, a little key pop up. And there it's locked, so it, it won't come off. That's how it comes on and off the helicopter. Very nice and easy. So we'll start out. Oh well, let's let's go to the next piece. So you have the the cradle mount that goes on the helicopter skid legs with the dovetail, and here is the downwash uh, downwelling light sensor platform, and also your GPS model module. And this is a double sided, very high bond tape that's on here. Um, you have your your clip that bonds to the side of the helicopter. You'll see there's a little bit of a step in it here. That's to allow the curvature of the airframe, which we'll show during the installation process of the airframe in a later video. Um, you have your power module, which takes the voltage from both of the cells that I showed you. Your battery cells go in here, and that basically turns, it, turns the power on, so this is the live power out to the camera. That's where this little connector comes in handy. You can pop that together, and that you know, makes the circuit. For taking it apart it's nice because you can un disconnect it there if you want to leave your cells in the tray and not take them on in and out all the time that's what this connector here is for this is basically kind of your on off switch you can leave the battery cells in from field to field so you don't have to dig them out because once you put these in you can map all day long and you won't have any issues there's plenty of power here to get through a whole day of mapping through the solar noon period um, so let's say you're back out, you want to power the camera, you simply just clip those two together, the camera powers on, the camera will go through its normal cycle. Um, these two cables that are in this package are what are used to conjoin at the top here. These two cables that are here conjoin the two sensors, the GPS and the downwelling light sensor. Then the single cable that comes with the camera you can tie wrap on that goes to the camera itself. So we'll set that aside. And this is our mica sense, one of them we have several. We're going to start uh, with this one here, and we want to make sure that the right side of the camera with all the connectors is to the right, and the card reader right here is to the left. So we'll start by mounting this. Like I said before, you want to make sure your screws are flush. So you'll, you'll line up your holes, and you'll feel them start to key in a little bit. The key here is to start with the front mount hole. I like to run it out just a little bit. You'll notice it'll come out just a touch like that so you can at least feel the hole. You'll line it up till it clicks in. Now you want to hold everything down tight to the camera. Don't let the screws start raising out and getting a gap. You want to, you want to keep this tight because of the geometry. You'll notice there's a, there's a 10 degree tilt here. That's so when your helicopter is flying in forward speed, the camera stays level to the ground. That's why that tilt is in there. If you try running these screws out and get it up like this, because of the geometry, the holes won't line up. And that's what I've had some customers email me about not being able to get it on, and I told them to start in the front first. So get this one started, holding the camera down like this tight. Then go to the back one hold it like this you might have to push in just a little bit of pressure right here with your thumb because the way the 3d printer uh, locates these true positions on these holes um, and from camera to camera there might be a little bit of deviation but they're pretty close but you'll feel it start to go in and it'll suck the the holes into alignment so go ahead don't tighten it all the way leave about a sixteenth of an inch on both of these forward and back now the next thing to do is the sides you have to just push down a little bit with it because there's a, it, it's invoking a little bit of stress into the plate, which is fine. That's what we want. We don't want it sloppy and loose because then your screws are going to fall out when you take the mount off. And you just push these down and run them in. Now you can go ahead and just snug them up. So the minute you feel them start to bottom out, just a light snug. Don't be reefing on them because, like I said, those are riv nuts you're threading into. You'll break the the bond on those into the back of the mount and then you'll have problems you won't be able to get it off so go ahead and bring it in until it's snug and you'll notice the gaps close up there'll be a little bit of a gap that's because of the rib nut it's it's off the surface of the carbon plate there this is now mounted solid so you can see how it snaps on here very easily 
that's how that works. The next video will be mounting it onto the helicopter, the mechanical mounting. So, well, let's start that.